morning and welcome to worship on this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. A special thank you to our guest today, Pastor Kathy Fred from Burke and Bill Davis, as well as thank you to all who helped bring this Facebook live stream worship to you, Jackie Murphy, Randy Akers, and worship materials from Jackie. We keep Pastor Jane and Jack in our prayers as they are away visiting family this weekend. She will return on November 10th. Please contact the office or Pastor Kathy for any pastoral emergencies. This November 4th weekend offering is going to two of the Grateful Grannies. As many of you know, we have had a wonderful partnership with Grateful Grannies to provide gifts to those in our community with great need. Grateful Grannies is having to make changes this Christmas season in order to consider the safety of the volunteers while shopping, organizing, wrapping, and delivery. And the fact that many students, including Jefferson, are not doing in-school learning until November 16th, because the students are not in school, the counselors will not have had a chance to identify, need, and communicate with families. For these reasons, Grateful Grannies has decided to supply gift cards to Jefferson, letting counselors disperse the students as needed. The intention of the gift cards is to help the families with groceries and also to purchase clothing. The need is so great this year. The Outreach Committee would like to request that those interested in supporting this much-needed mission send money to Holy Redeemer with a note to go to Grateful Grannies. Please send donations by December 7th so that we can send a donation check to the Grateful Grannies. Outreach Committee really appreciates your generosity. Prayers this week, the Fowler family on the death of their friend Ian. All the Gloria Day and Holy Redeemer families and broader communities affected by storm damage while still battling a pandemic and for those recently diagnosed with COVID-19. All families, students, teachers who are well into their school year as they prepare for exams and Thanksgiving break. Also along with our prayers, we have our celebrations. Ron and Sharon have an anniversary and Allison has a birthday this week. With that, let us begin our worship. Greetings, and um, it is an honor to be at worship with you this morning. I do have one prayer request. I forgot to mention that earlier, but um, my cousin, um, Dick Spiders, has been recently diagnosed with cancer, and I'd ask that you also lift him up in prayer. With that, let us begin. Let us begin with our uh, confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forgive the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. So let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. And in celebration of that, we begin with our opening hymn, For the Fruit of All Creation.
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. In the days of Amos, people thought that the day of the Lord would be a time of great victory. But Amos announced that it would be a day of darkness, not light. He said, liturgy is no substitute for obedience. The Lord demands justice and righteousness in the community. Our first reading is from the fifth chapter of Amos, verses 18 through 24. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 70 will be spoken alternately. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and undone. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in me. Let those who love your salvation stay forever. Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly. O oh God, you are my helper and my deliverer. O oh Lord, do not tarry. Some of the Thessalonians are worried that dead Christians will be excluded from the resurrection to our eternal life when Christ comes again. Paul reassures them with the word of hope that all Christians, living or dead, will be raised into everlasting life with Christ. Our second reading is from the fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, verses 13 to 18. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
The parable that immediately precedes today's lessons about is about the slaves of the just and unjust. And the just slaves take care of people and see that everyone has enough to eat. But the unjust say, you know, the, you know, the landlord is waiting. Let's just put our feet up and say, sit back and take life easy for a while. And not only that, they also harm the very people that they're supposed to be taking a care of. And the parable that follows today's lessons is the parable of the talents. Some are given five, some three, or some two, and some one. Do we use what God has given us, or do we complain that we don't have enough? Jesus reminds us that, number one, we are to be prepared. Open your eyes. Open your eyes to see me in your midst in the stranger or the outsider and respond to them. We hear later in Matthew 25, you are my people when you welcome the stranger in your midst, when you feed the hungry, when you visit the sick and imprison them, and when you are making disciples of all the world. If Jesus comes to us disguised and our neighbor, are we ready? Are we prepared to serve? Are we willing to use the gifts God's given us? In the Old Testament lesson, we read about Amos. And Amos's reality was that it was a time of wealth and prosperity for people in both the northern and the southern kingdom. It was a time of military peace, and people had kind of sat back and became self-satisfied with life as it was. The rich were getting richer. They were building fancy homes, and they had all that they wanted to eat and to drink. But, but the rich were not using their wealth to influence justice and help for the other people. Instead, they became greedy for more. The honest were cheating the poor, and the poor were be being asked to pay heavy taxes. The people in the midst of this, in this, in this self, um, what should I say, gratifying reality, continued to worship. They followed all of the rituals. And that is where the Lord says to them, I am tired. I am tired of your un, um, insincere rituals. And what they really wanted them to do was, what God wants them to do is to treat the other with the same justice and righteousness that God has given them. We come upon that, that key verse in Amos that says, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. God has given to us the gift of justice and righteousness. Do we use that for our neighbor, for the other? Or only do we use it for ourselves and we take it for granted? The prophet Amos is called to speak against injustice. Now, I really appreciate the fact that Amos was just an ordinary person. He was a farmer. He lived in the southern kingdom. And he, he was a shepherd of sheep and he took care of the fig trees. And out of that reality, out of that reality, God calls Amos and says, I want you, Amos, to speak to the people in the northern kingdom that they are not living a life of justice and righteousness for everyone. Is God calling you to speak against injustice so that there could be justice and peace for everyone? We are called in our scripture passages today to remember that Christ died for all people. And as we are forgiven, so we are called to forgive. As our lives have been restored through God's grace, so we are called to reach out and help others restore their life and know that there are new beginnings for them. As we have been given, we are called to give. That's why giving to the Grannies program is so important. But we think about the derecho 
and how that awakened us to the neighbor in our midst. You connected with people, I understand, here at Holy Redeemer that maybe you had never had interactions with before, that you helped them to clean up, and some of you are still living outside of your homes. But we learned in the midst of the duration that our neighbor is the person who needs help. It is the same thing with the pandemic. And it's also the same reality, I think, with the election. At first, many of us may have hoped that there would be a landslide, that our, that our side would, would win by millions and millions of votes, and there'd be no question. But as I reflected on that election, and as I waited for the results, I have begun to realize that the closeness of this election is an opportunity. None of us can be arrogant about the results. All of us, all of us can celebrate the fact that there was a record turnout, that people took seriously the call to vote, and not only President-elect Biden, but also President Trump received more votes than ever received before. The closeness of election also reminds us that we cannot gloat over the other. We cannot move forward with justice and righteousness without reaching across to our neighbor, across the aisle, if you will. We hear stories of families that are not able to speak to each other because of a different understanding of who should govern our nation. That's not what God is calling for. Last night, President elect Biden talked about a measure of unity. And that's what the gospel calls forth from us, is unity to reach out to each other. Some of the people that are closest and dearest to my heart, including the pastor who I, who I refer to as uh, my mentor, whose ministry inspired me to go into ministry, we have different understandings of who should be elected. But I talked to him most of them. And we stand on common ground that there needs to be righteousness and justice for everyone. That we need to listen to each other, that we need to hear the stories, that we need to know each other's experiences. And in that, we will find our common ground. The Lutheran magazine, the Living Lutheran, that was produced in October, talks about the fact that about how should Lutherans be involved in politics? And it talks about the fact that there are structural differences, that you know we don't want the government to be telling us how we're going to worship in the Lutheran church, but that there is a functional inter-reality, that we as people of faith are called to respond to our government in such a way that we require peace and justice for all people. Amy Ruman, who is the director of the ELC Advocacy, said, as the people of God called and sent into the world, our public testimony is always an opportunity to proclaim a hope-filled witness to the good news of Jesus Christ, the God who called us to do justice. How are you spending time with Jesus? David Lowry, in that same magazine, talked about the fact when we seek justice and peace for all people, it begins by us spending time with Jesus' teachings. Go deeper into the text. Reflect on it. What is God saying to you? Attend to your inner life. Do you find time for Jesus? Do you find time to be still and listen to God? To listen to your heart. This isn't just about your mind and gathering facts, but it's about listening to the heart and God's love for you, and out of that love, your love for your neighbor. Count the cost of your life. Don't, don't make Jesus in your image and say, Jesus is here for me and it's about me and Jesus. It's about you and Jesus and your neighbor. It's about loving God and loving your neighbor. 
We can't sit back. We need to be actively engaged. The challenge for us is to reach out to our neighbor. And it reminds me of that prayer from St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is discord, no. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Help me not so much to seek to be understood as to understand. To console as to console. For it is in giving that we receive. And it is in forgiving that we are forgiven. As I waited for the results of the election, and even before election week, I received an email from a friend who had absolutely different political understandings than I did. But we continued to be in dialogue. And we continued to find our common ground. And he shared with me a story that he wrote that he wants no credit for, that came through the power of the Holy Spirit, that talks about God's unconditional love for all people. And as I read that story, it reminded me of the Psalm 70 that we read for today. And I want to just read a part of that for you from the translation of um, Nan Merrill. And listen closely. You take delight, O radiant one, in gracing me with new life. O oh, beloved, Come and renew me. Let me face my weaknesses and all that confuses me, that keeps me from joy. I seek forgiveness for my wrongdoings. I desire only you. Let me begin anew as a child at his mother's breast to bask in love. And this is the story. And it comes from John's Gospel, and all of us know that favorite verse in John's Gospel, for God so loved the world, notice it says world, that he gave us Jesus, that whoever believes will not perish but have eternal life. And then do you know the next verse? For Jesus came into the world not to condemn, but that the world might be saved. How are you experiencing Jesus in your life? What needs to be renewed? And the story from my friend Bob, based on John Lee, the woman who was caught in adultery. I looked up just then. My eyes had been closed. I knew that I was going to die, to die by stoning, stoned by people that I knew were holy. I didn't want to die. I could hear them talking, but I couldn't understand the words. It was just voices in the background. What had I done? Why? How did I ever get to that spot? How did I ever get here? And then he put his hand on my chin, and as I bowed in front of him, he lifted up my chin. I opened my eyes, and there I was, looking into the eyes of a man, beautiful, green eyes. They shine. Never before had I noticed a man's eyes. Somehow, I can't explain it, but at that moment, I felt clean like I had been washed and refreshed. He smiled at me, and I felt love. For the first time, really, ever, I felt love. I can never explain the peace and the quiet. It was like nothing else existed but those eyes and his face. I will never be the same. I looked around. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the crowds, they were all gone. It was just him and me. Where did he go? Go and sin no more, he said. And he helped me to my feet. 
I could hardly stand. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to stop holding his hands. He had helped me stand. He never said he loved me. We couldn't say that in our culture back then. But he did. I could feel it through my whole body, and it was pure. I turned and I began to walk away. I looked back, and he was standing there looking at me. He saw me, and I raised my hand and I waved. And he raised his hand too, but he held it as if he were giving me a blessing. I saw that man, those eyes, those hands, only one more time. And that was the worst day of my life. You see, those same people that tricked me and caught me in adultery had put that man on a cross. I stood there watching, and he looked at me even though I was kept from being close. He looked right at me as if his eyes were just inches away from me. I saw the nails through his hand, the hand that had held my shame. All I know is that he loved me first, and I loved him. I wish I could see him again. Love God. And love your neighbor. Let justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Amen. Our worship continues with the song based on Amos Let justice flow like streams of sparkling water and joy, enabling growth, refreshing life, abundant, plenty. Pray, Pray the, Holy the Holy Spirit. Spirit. 
Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Amen. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for God's power to come upon the church, the world, and all in need. Responding to each petition with words from today's psalm, O Lord, make haste to help us. Holy God, arouse us to prayer and praise, both when we gather for worship and when we cannot. Sustain all those who help us to worship at this time. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, be haste to help us. Holy Creator, delight us with the autumn beauty of your earth. At this change of seasons, give the animals what they need for survival. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, Lord be haste to help us. Holy Peacemaker, give peace to our conflicted nation quell all attempts at violence, and halt the desire for retribution. Cure our nation from prejudice of every kind. Teach us how to abide together as one diverse people. Restore families and friendships torn apart by political differences. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, in haste to help us. Holy Sovereign, Grant that all newly elected officials of government will work faithfully for the common good. Give them wisdom, honesty, and humility. Illumine their convictions with a spirit of cooperation. Bless especially President-elect Joe Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, and their spouses, Dr. Jill Biden and Mr. Doug Emhoff. In this time of transition, pour upon them and upon their advisors a right spirit of dedication to justice and truth. We offer our prayers for President Donald and First Lady Melania Trump in their transition time. Bless all citizens of our nation with a spirit of reconciliation and peacemaking as we seek to unify following the election. Be pleased, O oh God, to deliver us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Holy Protector, bless the observance of Veterans Day. Bring armistice to areas of conflict and keep safe the military who serve in harm's way. Give to all the armed forces a dedication to defend the common good. Heal the wounds, both physical and emotional, experienced by active and retired service members. Please God, or be pleased, O oh God, to deliver us. Lord, be pleased to help us. Holy Healer, bring health and wholeness to those who are sick, those who live with chronic pain, and the thousands who daily contract COVID-19. Console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Protect those living in resettlement camps. Uphold medical care workers, especially in third world countries. We pray especially for those we name here before you. Kim, Dennis, Mark, Lori, Shannon, Helen, Jacob, Colleen, John, Joy, Robert, Marcia, Sarah, Diane, Rachel, Pat, Deanna, Rhonda Lee, Gary, Susan, and Max. Let us also pray for our Stephen Ministry care receivers and caregivers as well as those in need of Stephen Ministry care. Grant them peace and solace. Be pleased, O oh God, to deliver us. O Lord, bring haste to help us. Holy Beloved, form us into a people close to your heart and receive now our silent petitions. Be pleased, O oh God, to deliver us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Holy and immortal one, we remember before you all who have died in faith, 
especially the military and the civilians who died in armed conflicts, and those who remain before you here. At the end, bring us with them to be our Lord forever. Be pleased, O oh God, to deliver us. O oh Lord, oh Lord, be pleased to help us. Receive these prayers for the sake of him who lived, died, and rose for us. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Lord of all nations, grant me grace to love all people, every race. Let us sing.